Let's, Let's go, go to Jollywood Nights. Hey there, man fam. We are at Disney's Hollywood Studios to attend Jollywood Nights, Disney's newest holiday event. This is a specialty ticketed event, and this is the second night of the event. Did not go to the first night, which went... Well, there's been some mixed reviews. But we're not going to let that taint our review. We're going to go in there and have the holliest and jolliest of times. There are specialty shows you're not going to see anywhere else. There's specialty foods, some of the attractions are open, characters. So we are going to go in, have some Christmas fun, and then at the end we'll give you our honest thoughts on this new event. So let's go. Yay, these boots are ready. You know how we always say it is important to wear comfortable shoes that you have broken in when you go to Walt Disney World? I didn't do that today. Whee! <laughs> As we mentioned, Jollywood Nights is a specialty ticketed event, meaning your Hollywood Studios ticket does not grant you access to this party. It takes place from 8.30 until 12.30. It's just four hours long, but your party ticket does get you in at 7 p.m. So you could go see Fantasmic beforehand, maybe ride a traction or two if you'd like. Disney's Jollywood Nights starts at $160 per adult, but it goes even more. Most nights are around $180 per person. We've arrived to the front of Hollywood Studios around 8.15, so just a few minutes before the event officially kicks off, and we are headed to get into the park with our credentials. If you're already in the park prior to 7 with a different ticket, there should be places within the park that you can get a wristband or get access to the event. You don't need to come out and come back in. This is so cute. They made the crossroad sign red and green. I think only one of us can tell. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> also, we got our wristbands, wristband. as well as a lanyard. lanyard which I believe is supposed to be the map because you could scan the QR code for the party guide on there. Now, because we came in early, we didn't get to enjoy the sounds of the DJ, which is supposed to be out at the front of the park once the event officially kicks off. But we are gonna go ahead to get in line for one of the first things we wanna do. We got our picture with Ollie, the gingerbread man and the new neon sign. And now I'm just taking in the beautiful decor here in Hollywood. I love their Christmas decor. It's very, vintage old school Hollywood. It just feels like driving through a small town at Christmas time. That's what I think about. And they've added a little extra pizzazz for Jollywood with the lighting. First, we are headed down Sunset Boulevard to see Disney's Holidays in Hollywood, which is a variety show hosted by none other than the Muppets. It takes place in the Theater of the Stars, which is where during daily operations you can see the Beauty and the Beast show. However, in this show this evening, you will see Belle and Tiana as well as here, an all new song. But first, the line at Fairfax Fair seems fairly short. <laughs> nice. So we're gonna pop by and grab a quick bite to eat before heading into the show. We're gonna pop by for a pop over. Uh, yes, we're gonna pop by for a pop over. Nice, two for two. Yeah, we're crushing. Grabbed our first bites at Fairfax Fair. This is the mistletoe martini, which is a cranberry martini garnished with some cranberries and mint. This is the Just the Sides holiday popover. So it's macaroni and cheese, collard greens, ham, cornbread crumbs on top inside of a popover. So, cheers. Have you, have you ever had collard greens before? No. Okay, good. That is a tasty treat. The popover itself, it's really soft. I thought it'd be hard to cut into. The macaroni and cheese is really creamy and cheesy. I do wish it had a sharper cheese, like a Gouda or something, something smoky, or a sharper cheddar. The collard greens are cooked really well. They're not bitter, which can sometimes happen with collard greens. I like the little crumble. This is pretty tasty. Cheers. Martini. So I was going to say initially that was too sweet for me because it does have a very sweet cranberry beginning. And then, you taste the vodka. I could probably only have one of these. This is not bad. Despite the swiftness of the cast members and the line at Fairfax Fair, we weren't done reviewing the food till about 8.40, and that was five minutes before showtime, which meant the theater filled up. So learn from us. If you want to see the show, get in line at least probably 15 minutes beforehand. We did get to watch some of the Sunset Seasons greetings, which are projections on the Tower of Terror. They're really cute. There's a Frozen one, a Toy Story one, a Muppets one. Those are available for daytime guests as well. They're just cute little shows and then it snopes, but it's fun to see it at the party as well. We don't wanna make the same mistake again and arrive too late to the next Holidays in Hollywood show. So we're gonna stay close 
maybe grab something else to eat, check out some character cues, and then head back there in a minute. Alan, quick question. How do you feel about these dolls? Nightmares. Yeah, Peppermint I feel, nightmares. I feel bad. Peppermint nightmare sounds like a holiday treat. Or a band name. Peppermint nightmare, new band name I called it. Found the DJ, he's in front of the theater. But we are headed into Animation Courtyard. This is where your classic friends, Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, Pluto, and Goofy are meeting for the event and they have all new Jollywood Nights outfits. Gonna see how long their queues are. Of course, these characters tend to get long lines, but maybe we can squeeze one in or at least catch a peek of their new outfits before we go to the next show. So they are doing a back-to-back -back situation where Donald is switching with Daisy, Minnie is switching with Mickey, and Pluto is switching with Goofy. Donald and Daisy's line is about 20 minutes, Mickey and Minnie's line is about 25, and Pluto and Goofy's is about 10. So we're in Pluto, we're, we're waiting to meet Pluto and Goofy, and or Goofy, I should say. And I do have to say, tonight, the cast are doing an incredible job of letting us know who you are going to meet, and when, and about how much time you have until the characters switch with whomever is coming out next. Hi, Pluto! Awesome hug, friends! Yeah, do you want a hug too? Very nice. Oh, he loves the sweaters. They're very nice. Awesome, friends. We're going to go nice and close, looking right up at me first. And then over at Pluto's camera. Well, we actually had perfect timing because we saw the switches right when we were walking by. So we got to see Mickey and Daisy and Goofy in their cute outfits too. We came in to check out one of the two brand new photo experiences, which I should note that all your photo pass for the night is included with your ticket. You don't have to purchase that extra, um, but it's about a 25 minute wait right now. And we are making sure we see that next show. So we're going to pause on this for right now. Maybe we'll go check on the other one to see how long that line is. Otherwise, we have another plan. All right, the second photo op also had about a 15, 20 minute wait, which it's a really cool picture, but we have priorities that do not include photos. So if we have time later, maybe we'll come back. For now, I think we're headed to the Twilight Zone. We are headed to the exit of Tower of Terror, which is operating, by the way, to the Tip Top Club, which has a jazzy band. The Tip Top Club is actually where the guests were headed when that fateful lightning strike hit, and they've made a Twilight Sorare here. I don't think we're gonna get specialty drinks because the line looks pretty long, but we wanna listen to the band for a moment. We wanted to check out the Tip Top Club, but when we arrived, the band was taking a short break, so we headed to get in line for the show Disney's holidays in Hollywood because that's our number one priority. So we're going to see it this evening. Put your hands together for Disney Holidays in Disney holidays in Hollywood. Now the show is very cute. It features numbers with 
Princess Tiana, Belle, Mickey and Minnie, and it's hosted by the Muppets, who, as someone who loves the Muppets, we need more of that. And I'm so glad that they got representation at this event. That said, it's about a 30 minute show, and it's very long when the event's only four hours. And if you think back to our experience, which is the second show, when you take into account that we got to the queue ahead of time. 25 minutes ahead of time. Went to get seated, and then the exit until we got back at, into the park, that's about an hour-ish in total. And for a four hour event, an hour to be spent in one show is quite some time. It's about a quarter of your experience. Now, I love the show. I think if you're paying the dollar to come here and experience this event, this is the headliner show. This is a unique show. It's really, really fun, but I do wish it was a little bit shorter so it didn't take up so much of your time. I will say the first show filled. We weren't able to get into the first show a few minutes beforehand. The second show did not fill. I looked behind us. There are plenty of seats near us and in the further rows. So it's possible that if you go to a later show, you can come like 10 minutes beforehand and still be able to get a seat. Regardless, I think you're looking at 45 minutes invested in the show in wait time and show. So just know it's going to be a big chunk of your evening. 100%. Now the shows are what are exclusive about this event. Hoping second time's the charm at the Tip Top Club to see the band play. Tower of Terror maintains a 13 minute wait, which is a fun little joke when there's actually not a wait at all. There are several attractions open throughout the event. Obviously Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Slinky Dog Dash, Star Tours, and Smuggler's Run, and even Rise of the Resistance. And most of them, I just looked, have basically a walk-on. Mickey and Minnie's was 20 minutes. Rise of the Resistance is operating on a virtual queue. It opens up at eight. You have to have an event ticket to join the virtual queue. But when we sat down for the show, it still had availability if you wanted to join. But keep in mind, Rise of the Resistance is about a 25 minute attraction. And that's a big chunk of time at a four hour event. What a day this has been. What a rare for the actual Tip Top Club bar, pretty long, but I think my kings at Joffrey's have a special drink I wanna try. From Joffrey's, we grabbed a couple of Tinseltown teenies, which are made with cold brew, Kahlua, Grey Goose vodka, a hint of light cream, and they're supposed to come with whipped cream and cocoa on top, but we asked to skip those just to make them a little bit less sweet. They were still on the sweeter side. I was hoping for more of an espresso martini taste. And while the coffee was delicious, it was still too sweet of a drink and you couldn't really taste the vodka or Kahlua. Still, I preferred sipping on these versus the very long line at the Tip Top Club bar. Now the line for the Tip Top Club does wrap well down the entrance to Tower of Terror, but they do offer a number of cocktails from the Fifth Dimension Royale to the Twilight Daiquiri and a sparkling pomegranate apple cider. All of those based upon their initial reading look a little bit sweet for me, but if you're willing to wait and want to try some of these very unique cocktails from the Tip Top Club, this is your spot. The band at the Tip Top Club was great, but I would recommend getting a drink elsewhere, perhaps the Hollywood Brown Derby walk-up lounge and taking it with you to the Tip Top Club because the line to get the drinks there was very long. And while it was advertised as a spot to dance, there really wasn't enough room to actually dance. It would have been a lot more fun if it was in a different area that gave you some more room to move around. All that said, the band here was awesome, and I do recommend seeing them if you are going to Jollywood. Glad we got our Fairfax Fair popover and drink when we did. The queue is quite long now. So if that's on a must eat list for you, I recommend getting there early because we were actually able to order about five minutes before the event officially began. Now we enjoyed that band at the Tip Top Club for a few minutes, but I think the big issue with this event is there's a lot going on and it's only four hours. So you gotta do some picking and choosing for sure. And it's all happening in Sunset. Yeah, a lot of it's like, right here. I, I feel like Hollywood Studios is a big park, eh. but we're spending our, <laughs> but we're spending all of our time in a courtroom. Yeah, there's nothing in like 
half the park. Nothing in Galaxy's Edge, nothing in Toy Story Land, nothing really over in Muppet Courtyard area either. So we're headed over towards Echo Lake, which is where some of the other characters are, as well as one of the hottest treats of the evening. See what those lines look like before we eventually... The other must-do on our list is the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas show. Made it to Echo Lake and picked up our Gertie cookie. But we also did some scouting at the characters in the area. Now there are a number of characters here. You have Chippendale Rescue Rangers and their queue was about 35 minutes when we arrived. You also have Phineas and Ferb making their return to Hollywood Studios. Their queue is about an hour and 30 minutes. You also have Powerline Max. Now his queue is much more manageable at 15 minutes. And as a surprise, Duffy Bear showed up here at Jollywood Nights and his queue is at about 25 minutes. He is so kawaii and I love him so much, but 30 minutes for a character meet and greet at a four hour party is a lot. Also note Powerline Max meets regularly during the day, so I wouldn't waste time during the party trying to meet him, even though he is arguably the coolest character out here. Absolutely. Also, he was jamming out to those beats when I was over there. That's his deal. Yeah, for sure. The Santa Gertie cookie, modeled after the queen, Santa Gertie herself, is a sugar cookie with royal icing and a little Santa hat, and it's got a slight mint flavor. You can get it by itself or with soft serve ice cream, and let me tell you, get the soft serve. It is one of the best holiday desserts I've ever had. The cookie itself, while packaged, is quite soft. It has a little bit of that mint flavor. I wish that was a little bit stronger, but this is a simple and delicious and adorable dessert. Now we are on our way to Commissary Lane for Festival de la Calle, where there is more light live music, and some new tasty eats to sample. Got our food from ABC Commissary and then took it outside because we wanted to eat it while watching the amazing street musicians. What we picked up was the chicken empanadas with street corn, the birria taco, and the Oaxaca Old Fashioned. The chicken empanadas are served with a side of street corn salad and topped with chili peppers, lime, and cotija cheese. These were fantastic. Nice, crispy, flaky crust, very rich and creamy chicken inside, and I love dipping it into that street corn that has that nutty cotija cheese on top. I wish it was a larger portion, but overall, this was a very tasty dish, my favorite savory of the night. The birria taco came with shredded short rib and Monterey Jack, served with the beef consomme for dipping. Now, I have to say that the shredded short rib was a little bit dry, but the sheer volume of Monterey Jack cheese made up for it, and the beef consomme, while a little bit salty, was a nice compliment. It wasn't the best birria taco I've ever had, but it is a nice savory dish if you want to have one at the event. The Oaxaca Old Fashioned was made with Casa Dragones Blanca Tequila, Del Mague Vida Mezcal, Agave Nectar, Mexican Chocolate and Orange Bitters, served over ice and garnished with an orange. And this was hands down the best drink of the evening. It was small in size, but it packed a lot of flavor. Smoky with a little bit of that smooth tequila taste. I really enjoyed it with that light chocolate and citrus flavor on top. Yes. Honestly, y'all, Fiesta de la Calle is where it's at. People are actually dancing to this amazing band. The guitarist was great as well. The food was not the best food I've ever had at a theme park, but it was very flavorful. I really liked that cocktail. Definitely the best cocktail we've had so far. Now we're popping into Baseline Tap House to grab another specialty beverage. I should preface, we're not driving tonight and these are not full-size drinks, so any concerns, no need. Um, Baseline Tap House is one of my favorite places to get a drink regularly, and I heard from one of my friends, Craig, who works for the Diz, uh, that this is a sleeper hit drink and not to miss it. Baseline's beer margarita is just that. It is a beautiful baby between a beer and a margarita. It's a blend of Patron Silver Tequila, Contro Liqueur, and lime juice, and topped with a Scrimshaw Pilsner over ice. This is one of the very few full-size specialty beverages you can find at the event, and I wasn't sure if I would like it because I like margaritas, I like beer. You know what? Turns out I like them together. It was slightly sweet because of the lime juice and Contro Liqueur, but the beer balanced it out. It was a very refreshing, delicious drink. We got our drinks from Baseline, and now we are headed to take them into the queue for What's This? The Nightmare Before Christmas sing-along. This is the other new and exclusive show here at Jollywood Nights. What? 
and I'm excited to see it. I, for one, love The Nightmare Before Christmas. Molly, how do you feel? I love the music. I've still not seen the movie. <laughs> <clears throat> Dear viewer, before you lash out, I've tried. And we will continue to make a valiant effort. I fall asleep. I'm sorry. Jack's lament song is... Well, anyway, we ride. We thought we had to finish these beforehand, and we started to power through, but then Wes, the cast member, made our dreams come true and said we could bring them in. Hello, my friends. What a wonderful sight. Let me welcome you all on this fine Christmas night. Now, you heard the old story, we all know it well, but that's not the story I came here to tell. Blinking back at the moon in its cloudy disguise, we ask ourselves, what do we truly recall? Was it really a dream? Did it happen at all? <laughs> okay, I never thought I'd say this, but I might think the Nightmare Before Christmas show is the best thing here. It was... All right, now hold on. I'm processing what you've just said just now. And you've not finished the movie. No, but the Jack puppet was amazing. That The actors were amazing. I love Oogie Boogie. And I, I do think Oogie Boogie song is probably the one of the best villain songs ever. Right. I really enjoyed that. Fully agree. I, it's funny that you mentioned the actors. There were moments in that because of how they acted. It's very much, it's mime. There, there's no it, spoken part. It felt kind of Cirque. -esque. I was just saying, it gave me Cirque vibes. And it was very... It was. It drew me in. Yeah. And I loved it because I didn't know what to expect for a sing along or how the actors would engage. But that was perfect. I also liked. I think just the experience was really nice. We walked in five, seven minutes before the show. We were allowed to bring our drinks in, yeah. and it just it's inside and air conditioning. Like it just was a nice vibe versus like I love the holiday show in Theater of the Stars, but you had to get there twenty five minutes early, and it's just like more, more of a production. More of a production, yeah. And, and I thought this was great. So even if you don't love the movie, the puppet of Jack Skellington is unbelievable. It's the Chef's one they kiss. use at the fireworks at the Halloween party. That was awesome. Make sure that's on your must-do list if you come to this event. We are vibing out here in front of the Chinese theater. There's about 30 minutes left of the event and the main fireworks kind of finale of the event is Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam. And it starts at 1230, which is what time the event ends. So we are headed to kind of the one main area of the party we haven't been to yet, which is Municiburg. Because yeah. there's an Incredibles Christmas party here with Frozone and Edna Mode. So we're gonna check this out before we head to the fireworks. Oh, we got a DJ? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> oh, do you believe? Partying, you know, I do. Before Christmas, I do. You gotta be ready. Interesting, Interesting how Cher hasn't come to the podcast, but she did show up here. Oh, does anybody feel a chill in the air? Hello, Frozone. How are you? Thanks for the snow. Appreciate it. It's been a little hot, and I like that. 
Yes, absolutely. Will you show us how to pose like you? Okay. From the market, we picked up the buffalo chicken spring rolls as well as Frozone's snowball macaroons. The buffalo chicken spring rolls are fried chicken spring rolls served with a jalapeno ranch dipping sauce and fried rice noodles. Now, I actually thought this was a pretty good serving for the price. It came with three spring rolls and a hefty amount of the dipping sauce. And I love a dipping sauce. This has to be one of my favorite dishes of the evening. Crispy spring roll exterior, a nice zesty buffalo chicken interior, and that dipping sauce, the jalapeno ranch added a little bit more spice. Chef's kiss. Frozone's snowball macaroons are coconut macaroons drizzled with a blue vanilla frosting and topped with white snowflake sprinkles. For starters, these are very cute. I also love macaroons because I love coconut and they tend to be a good dessert that's not too, too sweet, which is perfect for someone like me. There's a little bit of chocolate on the bottom. They were nice and moist, quite tasty. If you like coconut, these are worth a try. After going to Municiburg and visiting with Frozone and picking up a couple of tasty treats, now it is time to wrap our evening with Jingle Bell Jingle Bam! which has made its return just for Jollywood Nights. I've missed this show. You know, I didn't even know any of the characters initially. I mean, I'm not a prep and landing fan, <laughs> but if I remember correctly, the show's cute. The show is very cute. Jingle bell, jingle bell. Knocking around the Christmas tree at the Christmas Christmas and happy holidays. Aww. We should definitely have a party. It's really not in the budget this time. <laughs> ho, ho, go! Well, that brings us to an end to our time at Jollywood Nights. I think we had a pretty good time, but for our honest thoughts, let's start with the cons and go to the pros. What are your cons? I think this event is simply too short. It's only four hours long, and there is a lot going on at this event. There are two brand new shows, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam, which I will give them credit. That's at the end of the night, which is good timing. You've also got a ton of new food, characters, plus rides. There's simply not time to do it all. And you feel, I felt very rushed all night long trying to get to everything and we didn't even do everything there is to offer. I, I really do agree. I also think for me, you're not utilizing a lot of the park, two thirds of the park. The majority of this event exists on Sunset Boulevard. Right there. And then in Echo Lake a little bit. That leaves out Toy Story Land, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, and I mean, I, I guess you can count Commissary Lane because you do have uh, some some events happening there, but... Muppets, though. That whole Muppets, Muppets area. The entire Muppets area, it's just a lot of park space that isn't utilized, uh, which leads to a lot of congestion in the areas that are used, which led to us, as Molly said, feeling rushed. So having something existing back in the back half of the park, Life Day, for example, in Galaxy's Edge, or any number of Christmas overlays for the Toy Story Land characters, that's just for me. It seemed like a it seemed like a miss on my end. Even more so than at an event like Mickey's Very Merry or Not So Scary, you have to pick and choose what's important to you. For us, the two most important things tonight were the two exclusive stage shows. Yep. We didn't even try to do things like the Brown Derby Lounge, just because we heard from a lot of friends that were here night one that it's not that different than just going to the Brown Derby, and it's not worth how much time it takes. I also think the biggest miss with this event is that there's nothing included. <sighs> At Very Merry, you get cookies, cookies and cocoa and hot beverages. At Not So Scary, you get trick-or-treating. Yep. At After Hours, you get ice cream and popcorn. This event is 
pretty expensive and nothing is included with that cost. Psst, future Molly here. Past Molly doesn't realize that they're gonna hand you two coasters on the way out, which is a nice take home, but I stand by that some kind of snack or drink should be included with the price of the event. And now for the pros, what do you got? I think Disney did listen to guest feedback after night one and they did add some things and make some improvements. For example, we saw a lot more characters yeah. than were reported out at night one. We saw Snow White and Dopey, we saw Pinocchio, Jiminy Cricket, friends of ours saw Stitch and Mary Poppins, so Duffy in his cute little Santa outfit. And so while their lines were still longish, it was nice that they added more entertainment to help spread people out. On top of that, the existing entertainment, the two new shows, when you have Disney's Holidays in Hollywood, and you also have the Nine Before Christmas sing-along, those were great exclusive shows. Uh, I think that that, frankly, was the right call to make for our number one items to have on this event. They were just a ton of fun, and I really enjoyed that. It also brought out a lot of characters that you don't necessarily see often or highlighted in that way, uh, and getting a new and exclusive song was really, really cool to see as well. I also really like Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam. I forgot how fun that nighttime spectacular was, and I think the timing is right to have it at the end of the night so you're not giving up event time to watch the show. Absolutely. And lastly, if I may, the food that we were able to get, we weren't able to get everything just of because of timing and the schedule and how we wanted to do things, but the food that we did get was pretty darn good and certainly above average theme park food, and that's just nice to have in an event like this when the specialty food is actually special and good. Lastly, we didn't ride anything tonight, but the wait times were very, very low. So I think if you approach this event like an after hours event, Ooh, yeah. like if you were like, all right, we've got four hours to ride as much as we can in the park. We don't want to do a Genie Plus. You can ride the heavy hitters without lines, without dealing with lightning lanes. You just probably wouldn't be able to do the specialty stuff too. Well, that's a wrap on our night here at Jollywood Nights. We got a lot done. It's definitely a new event, but I think if you have a ticket for this season, I think that prioritize those new shows, enjoy some snacks, and just enjoy a holiday event here at Hollywood Studios. I think they made a lot of improvements from night one. They're listening, clearly, and that's it's nice to see. But, friends, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe if you are new. Follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join in the conversation about this or any of our other videos, join us on Discord. The links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been Holly and Jolly. Wood. Has been. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 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 Nailed it. Wow. Nailed it. Crushed it. <laughs> Turkey. That season's over. Want to do it again? Squirrel. I just want to high five. So, how'd the shoes work out? Okay. I have a slight blister on the outside right here, but the base of my feet, very comfortable. Target, woo! <laughs>